Hi guys, got one of those requests to make a rubber band powered car. Rubber band powered car to go 30 plus meters. Right, I have no way of checking whether it can go 30 plus meters. You need a nice uh, school hall or gymnasium or something like that with a nice smooth floor. I've got my kitchen and conservatory here so we can do about eight or nine meters but there's no way i can test it over 30 meters um basically just to add more rubber bands to give yourself more power to go further you might need to put rubber tires on your wheels to stop them spinning with extra power but yeah, I can't I can't do 30 meters for you. I can't test it. As long as you make sure you minimize all your friction so your axle bearings run freely, then you should be okay, but I can't test it. We can use cardboard bottles and skewers and rubber bands. Oh, and he wants it by tomorrow. Yeah, that's always a that's always a bit of a laugh. Um bottle. I assume we mean plastic bottle. So that's a plastic pot bottle. Got a bit of water running around in there. Cardboard. I assume it's specifically cardboard rather than my favorite CDs for wheels. I like CDs because they're round. They're reliable. They're all the same. You don't get a problem with them. Uh, but the other day, I did this rubber band powered car, which I made cardboard wheels from. This is from a pizza box, a 10 inch pizza box. So I just drew five inch circles, cut them out. I put a strengthening piece across that way to make them a little bit more rigid, but they're still going to. Um, buckle up a little bit when they get damp and that. The axles I've used happen to be barbecue skewers. So I think I'll be able to reuse these. That will save me a bit of time. I've also got bits of drinking straw there just to space the wheels to keep them away from the bodywork. So I'll reuse them. And I've got some rubber bands on there. Uh, so I'll reuse those wheels, those axles, and those bits of drinking straw spacers. The bottle. Uh, if we look at it carefully, it has a seam. Can we see the seam? There's a seam goes along there. And along there, we've got a ring around there. So if we use, where was the seam? That's a mark for the back axle where the seams cross. At the front end, hmm. Might need to use a ruler just to get the distance so that our wheels are parallel. Let's get a ruler. If you don't get them parallel, it'll go off to one side. Mine usually go off to one side anyway, because I never get them quite parallel. But the straighter you can get it, the more chance you've got of doing 30 meters in a straight line. So I've actually measured 22 centimeters there. Next thing we need to do is if we're going to put the rubber band inside, we need to cut a hole all the way around there. You can 
poke a hole in and cut round with scissors. We can use a sharp knife. Obviously, do that with adult supervision. And then a rubber band, you can either poke it through here and put something across to hold the rubber band in place, or you could even make a little hole up here for the rubber band to tie on to. Anyway, I will cut that out. I'll do it off screen so you can't see me cutting my hands, and then we'll come back. There we go. Hole in the top so we can reach inside and attach the rubber band to the back axle. Need to make a hole here. My preferred method of making a hole is to heat up a nail so it melts the hole in place. That makes it stronger because sometimes the plastic splits when you just push a hole through with a metal spike. So what I'll probably do now is I'll go and open those holes up a little bit with a hot nail, heat it up in a flame to make those holes a little bit bigger. That's my nail on a stick that I use for melting holes. Right, I'll take these off here. They're glued in place, so I'll have to be careful. And then we will reuse them. So wheels in place. Rubber band. Okay. All right, you want it to go over the axle, round and underneath itself, so it holds itself in place. Then you can wind it up. And away you go. This is probably going to get wheel spin because it's very lightweight. So you'll probably need to add some weight in the bottom there to hold it on the ground and help the wheels grip. I usually use old batteries because they've got a reasonable weight. So I'll put some in there and we'll give it a run down the kitchen. Like I say, I can't demonstrate it doing 30 meters. I've no idea if it'll do 30 meters. It'll be a matter of how strong your rubber bands are. To get more turns around the axle, if you stretch the band as you wind it round, you can get more turns because obviously you've got more rubber band to stretch to get round there. So that's a little trick that helps. Get it started and then stretch it. And you'll get far more turns around the axle. And obviously it's the number of times that the axle turns round that gives you your distance under power. Then when the power is finished, when the rubber band drops off, the distance it goes after that is down to how little friction you've got here, where the axles go through, and how much momentum it's built up. So a little bit of weight in there also helps because it builds up momentum and keeps it going. But the more you stretch that as you put it on, the more turns you will get. But that could be a problem. If you don't wind it on evenly and it winds over itself, it gets caught up. And then it doesn't go the full distance. So you have to be careful when you wind it up. So it comes off easily. So I'll put a couple of old batteries in the bottom just to give it a bit of weight. OK, 
okay that was about six meters and it hit the end of the wall hard so it would have gone quite a bit further but that will do I'm not gonna try and demonstrate 30 meters got no way of doing that as long as it hits the wall at the end here we know it could do more than six meters <laughs> 